Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. I pray that everyone had a great week. Today, I'm going to speak about faith and what it means to have faith in God and move on what God tells you to move on, even when it looks impossible in the, in the natural. To move when God says move, regardless of the circumstances. So today, I am coming from James chapter 2, and I'm going to start at verse 17. It says, Does also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. So we can have all the faith in the world. But if we don't put action with our faith, then nothing will manifest. And a lot of people get mad at God because they believe that God is not answering their prayers because they have faith for a job. They have faith for a bigger house, a better car, a spouse, or whatever that thing is they're believing for. But they're not putting action with the faith. In Hebrews I'm going to turn there right quick. He, he, Hebrews chapter 11 is called the, um, the faith chapter because it talks about what it means to have faith, what faith is, what faith looks like, and what faith can manifest in your life. So Hebrews 11 one says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So you're not going to see it all the time, but you have to move on it. And I know for us, you know, seeing is believing. But in God's kingdom, believing is seeing. So if God said it, I see it before it even manifests in the natural. And we have to condition ourselves to not think like the world, but think like the word. Whatever God says in his word is true. No word of God would ever fall, fall flat. If God said it, he's going to do it. You just have to believe it. One of my, I have plenty of favorite verses, but one of my favorites in um, chapter 11 is chapter, I mean, um, verse six, it says, but without faith, is it, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So how are you going to go to God and you don't even believe that God can do what you're believing him for? If, you, if you're going to God, you got to know that he is God, that he is the master of the universe. God created all of this. The whole world is in his hand. So if you're going, James chapter 1, I believe it says, um, you know, a double-minded man should not ask God anything and expect to receive it. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He's tossed to and fro. So if you've asked God for something and you're believing God for something and then the circumstances don't look like they don't look favorable, now you start doubting. You doubt God, you doubt the word, you doubt your faith. And it's not that God is not answering. Your doubt is keeping it from manifesting. So if you're going to trust God, trust God. If you're going to believe God, believe God. If you're going to stand on the word, stand on the word. Immovable, unshakable, always abounding in the works of the Lord and believing that he's going to do what he said he's going to do for you. So um, Hebrews chapter 11, that's a good chapter if you're struggling with your faith walk, if you're not understanding why things aren't happening that you're believing for. It's not God. We know God is infallible. God cannot fail and God cannot lie. So we have to do an internal evaluation. God, is there doubt in my life? Expose doubt, Lord. Expose where I'm faltering. Expose, ex help me to see what I'm not doing that I should be doing in order to manifest what's already waiting for me in heaven into the earth. It's already done. You have to do your part, though. A sister, and I may have already spoke about this years ago when I um, went to school. She said, I'm, I got faith that God's going to let me go to college, too. I said, well, have you um, filled out an application? 
No. Okay, so faith without works is dead. What do you think? Somebody's going to come knock on your door and say, come on, sis, go to college. You have to do the process. You have to fill out your application. You have to do your FAFSA if that's what you're going to do. You have to get your, your transcripts, all of that. There are steps you have to take to get the ball rolling. But Hebrews um, chapter 11 it, it's just a chapter of faith. It talks about everything that the people in the Bible did to bring to pass what God said would happen for them. By faith, Abraham took Isaac up to the mountain to sacrifice him, believing that even if he did, that God could raise Isaac back up. And we know the story that God provided a sacrificial lamb, I think it was, in, in, in Isaac's place, because of Abraham's faith, he took his son and was going to sacrifice him, believing that God, okay, Lord, you said that through this son, that I will be the father of many nations. So if you are asking me to do this, God, if you are asking me to lay my Isaac down, God, I know that you have a plan for this. And a lot of times we don't let go of what God is asking us to let go of by faith because we are afraid that, um, that we're going to miss out on something. If God is telling you to let something go, you best believe that he has something better in store for you. So if he's telling you to let that relationship go, if God has told you, okay, I'm getting ready to promote you, this may not be the place that I'm going to do it in. By faith, you have to believe okay God said it so I'm gonna do it back in 2007 I was missing my husband and you praying I'm like God I really miss my husband and he was working in a another country and God said I'm gonna bring him back I'm gonna I'm gonna bring him back and I'm like okay Lord you know we you know he has a good job what what does that mean but I trusted God and I was talking to the pastor's wife. I said, God said he's going to bring my husband back for a, a little bit. And she was like, didn't he just leave? I said, yeah, but God said this and I believe it. I get a phone call. My husband tells me, baby, I got to fly into D.C. for three days. You want to come down and see me? So don't tell me what God can't do if you don't stand, you know, if you're standing on faith. If God said it, believe it. That's it. If God said it, believe it. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. The walls didn't just fall down on their own. The people marched around those walls. They were blowing their um, instruments. They were singing songs to the Lord. They marched around those walls for seven days and they fell down. It was through faith that these people subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edges of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. So by faith, these people put armies to flight. By faith, Daniel knew that God was going to deliver him and that I, from the lion's den. By faith, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into that fiery furnace, believing that God would deliver, deliver them. So by faith, stand on God's word. Don't doubt. Don't compromise. Stand on God's word. It will come to, come to pass. You got to have faith that every promise of God is yes and amen to you. If you believe that God will give you the desires of your heart that line up with his word and his will, don't let anybody shake your confidence in God. People call me arrogant and all kinds of things because I speak the word to situations. When I was in the hospital, they telling me everything that could go wrong and this happened to that person, I said, but it shall not happen to me. And I meant it. I didn't waver. It's not arrogance. It's confidence in my father. It's confidence in his word. It may have happened to them, but by faith, it shall not happen to me. I will live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. So by faith, I speak those things that be not as though they already are. 
God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I love you. Thank you for stopping by. And remember, stand on faith, unshakable, unmovable. In Jesus' name, amen.